science to learn a topic that might be not very fun, but you were glad to know it when we're done. It's called respiration, it happened in yourself, and when you were breathing, it performed very well. First steps glycolysis. You might not know of this, but during this process of glycolysis, glucose undergoes a reaction that causes a change in electron attraction to ATP are used for produced to NAD plus get reduced. Pyruvate, NADH, and ATP all containing energy. Pyruvic acid has the most, but the two of them have to go to the next step of this process. Oxygen is the key part of it. Fermentation of many types. Two of them are quite a hype. Lactic acid and alcoholic are their names. Do not think of them as the same. The lactic acid one takes pyruvate and makes some lactic acid and NAD+. And by using all this stuff, we can make some delicious cheese. May I have some of that, please? Alcoholic is the other, used by yeast to make ethyl, along with CO2 and NAD+. These reactions will make just enough energy to supply these slaving things, but there is a more efficient way to make energy. Aerobic respiration makes ATP, which is used by the cell in the body. Pyruvate enters the mitochondrion, as it has done for eons. Then it binds to coenzyme A. This happens throughout the day. The released product is CO2. This is happening inside of you. NADH and acetyl-CoA are produced during this reaction. Hooray! These are made in the mitochondrial matrix. Make sure you know all the bases of the Krebs cycle which happen next and we'll explain all the confusing steps. There are a couple acids you should know. Oxaloacidic and citric make this process go. Oxaloacidic and acetyl-CoA first combine to make citric acid, which is just fine. Two CO2 are produced, three ND plus and FADs get reduced. <coughs> Phosphate and ADP combine to form an ATP. The particles, which were the last three, are carriers of high energy. When the Krebs cycle has come to an end, oxaloacidic acid is formed again. The Krebs cycle has done one turn. It's now time to learn about the electron transport chain within the inner mitochondrial membrane, NADH and FADH2 send protons right through within the inner mitochondrial membrane so they are contained. Within the intermembrane space which acts as a base for the concentration gradient of protons which are being sent up the gradient by using energy from electrons which are moving through the electron transport chain until the energy is drained from the electrons which they had contained. Oxygen acts as the final electron acceptor. It takes in electrons and becomes water. Without oxygen, aerobic respiration cannot happen. Hence the aerobic term uh, from the start of the process that we all must learn. Water also needs protons, which can't be confused with photons. The protons are sent down the gradient by a multifunctional protein that is located in between the matrix and the intermembrane space. The, its name ATP then states this protein acts as a carrier of protons, a translated bilayer, but also a key enzyme for making ATP in the main time. This protein takes phosphate and ATP and uses the potential energy of protons passing through the proteins that makes ATP like a powerful machine. These proteins make more ATP than the combined products of the previous processes. One molecule of glucose only makes 36 to 38 ATPs. Holy moly! Overall, six oxygen and glucose combine with that enzyme in a perfect harmony to make six CO2 and six water. 
and a ton of energy, but this is only aerobic respiration. Cellar respiration includes fermentation. Breaking down organic molecules to form ATP, which is used by the body for energy. Now let's put our knowledge to the test. Everybody respirate. <laughs> we give a shout out to Colt Reinhardt and Winston. Hope you all had a ton of fun. Uh -oh.